Hello, this is Grant. Welcome back to another episode of Dead Rising 2 Master Run. So we're going to go ahead and get Welcome to the family with, family with Kenneth and Jack, as well as the, I believe, Workers' Compensation right after and Short Sighted. It's a pretty nice, simple loop you can make, and you can pick up a whole bunch of survivors. Plus, with that Leadership Magazine, it's pretty simple. If you're coming through here, you can stop at the High Noon Shooting Range, I think it's called, which has shotguns and snipers. Always useful, especially early on in the game. So if you're not familiar, do that. There's also a hidden light machine gun up here in this little like rocket formation. It's over here to my right. If you want to hop over on that little creek, there's a cliff and it's just hidden there. I actually didn't find that out about that until I think my last run. So it's pretty helpful. There's a ton of small stuff hidden all around the map. So it's useful to know that. And especially with the whole combo weapon system, if you know where some of the better combo weapon parts are, you can do some cool stuff. Or just if you can carry them, it's nice to bring them back. That being said, the majority of things you want to use for combo weapons are pretty obvious. Things like the spike bat, the defiler, again, the snail gloves, the what's called knife gloves too. Those are all really easy to kind of get together and find. They're not actually hidden. So here we just gotta go pick up Kenneth and Jack, and they're pretty simple, they take care of themselves. What's important about Jack is he's gonna be involved in a poker game later, and the point of the poker game is to get his helmet. There's actually a full suit of knight armor in the game, and if you put together all the pieces and wear the beard, it will effectively double your health. It's actually based on the game Ghosts and Ghouls, or goblins and ghouls i'm i don't know i'm sorry i should look that up but uh it was an old nes game i think there by also by capcom which dead rising is by where nice. i would say similar to like uh mario you have one hit and you die but if you get the power up the armor in this case you have two hits however if you get hit while in the armor your armor explodes off and you just have your boxers which is the same case in dead rising 2 and in fact the boxers chuck wears is from Ghouls and Goblins. Whatever it is, that game. I'm sorry, I, that is a very important game to the people, and I don't know what it is. It had a lot of cool stuff. Like, if I recall, you beat the game, which had no saves, and just, like, it was really tough and infamously hard. You beat the game, and it turns out it was all a dream. So you had to beat the game again, again, in one sitting. And then you got the actual ending. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool idea. I mean, Dead Rising and Capcom in general has been... Hat really has some fun, imaginative ideas. They're not always great, but it's really cool when they are. Stuff like the tiger. Like, it's such a crazy thing to have in a game like this, but it's pretty cool. I wish there was more of it. Or some of, like, the mini games. So. Well, that's a little bit of a bad story. Jack's actually extremely good at poker. So. He is really annoying, but getting the knight armor is a huge boon for you if you want to go out of your way to get it. I'd recommend it. It's not too bad. Like, the poker thing just takes time, and poker's not that hard, especially because if you get all the gamma in the magazines, you're pretty much, you have it slated in your favor to get high cards and, like, streaks and stuff, so with, like, a statistical bias to get good hands, as long as you're not following some weird betting strategy, it's not that tough. And like I said in the other so episodes, most of these guys are going to be able to take care of themselves really easily, especially with the leadership magazine. I don't know how much effect that has, like, I think it just has some passive uh, speed bonuses, and like, maybe they're more likely to get into fights with zombies than hiding. But really, its use is just certain survivors that are injured, like this, like one we will encounter later on. They can move at full speed when you have that magazine. And again, I don't know if I mentioned before, I'm going to try and hit as many ATMs as I can, because I need to get $100,000 before the main poker game in order to be able to participate. As well as I'd like to eventually unlock some of the cars. I think I end up unlocking one of them probably if I am have the right prediction on where I'm going to be at in terms of cash. You can actually farm or grind for cash if you get all three Gamma magazines. The bonus extends to many of the games, the casinos, and there's a couple you can go around where it'll be like bet a thousand, a thousand to play, but win anywhere from like one thousand to fifty thousand, and since you're biased to win, if you just keep doing that over a long course of time, you'll build up money. Or do Terra's reality. But like I said, I, that's not really reliable because it's really hard to get in a game. 
if anyone would be open and want to play, I would love to do so. I don't even know if I've actually played all the games. But and they they have they have some really cool games like you have to wear like a giant moose skull like with these like antlers. You have to like knock zombies into this chopper. They have the motocross game from the beginning. Really cool stuff like that. And they have unique weapons that are in Terry's reality that you can make like I guess like a Jerry rig versions, but they're really durable in Terry reality and they're just kind of cool seeing that side of the Dead Rising universe. It's just too bad that there's not enough people online to really warrant going online. Plus, once you have the cash, there's I don't think that many people play it just for fun. I'm going to make a little electric rake here. Right. This is a great weapon you can always make when you come through here. It's pretty good for the fight with the dude on the motorcycle. But, I don't know. I like it. I make it. It's very powerful. It gives you a lot of PP. It's not very durable. It breaks very fast. So, there's that. This is one of the things where, like, I would probably make this weapon more often, but you're only going to be making it in that exact maintenance room. Like, you're not going to be collecting a rake and a battery elsewhere. So, it's not really a reliable weapon to go get. As you see, you get 200 PP, but that's 400 once you have the actual combo card, so it's pretty nice. You can also use those uh, parasols. Those are really amazing out here because you can just push zombies around. They're one of my favorite weapons in Dead Rising 1, just because how useful they are. Plus, they make you run. I like speed, I like efficiency, so... Anytime I can like push something or charge, it's... I just have a heyday with that. In the background over there is the entrance to the bunker. You can't actually do that because it's sealed, but... There's a lot of zombies there, so if you ever pass by with like a grenade or a queen, check one down there. Or if you're doing the zombie genocide achievement, we have to get so many. It's always a debate like whether or not you drive the SUV down there because it does represent like a hundred zombie kills and you're grinding them so that'd be nice. But if it, if the SUV gets stuck, you're SOL. I might do a video where I grind for some zombie kills. I don't know what the unlock is for getting like that 65,000 in this game. is. It was a mega buster in the first game which was really important but I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even notice I was squirting my little squirt gun there that I still have. But essentially what's kind of neat in this game is it's not just a straight up grind because you it's very hard to finish the game with that many zombie kills without doing enough cases to get overtime mode. So I actually kind of like that. Like, on one hand it sucks, it'd be nice if you just grind it and get it done faster because I don't want to sit and grind thing all things all day. But it is it does really break up the monotony, the fact that you can stop go do some side cases and come back. So we have these guys, they're stealing from their casino because they feel like they're owed something and this is their chance with the whole apocalypse. Stuart won't come with you initially so I just, you just punch him. I think you can actually convince survivors, at least in one, to change their ways if you use a non-damaging attack, particularly the squirt gun. That won't hurt them but it still counts as like damage instances so you can turn them on your side without actually really hurting them. I also think they tone back how some things work into in terms of damage. Like if you remember in one, certain like weapons had the effect, I guess they like kind of like cave in someone's skull and it was an instant kill on both zombies and survivors. And if you're not careful, like say if you have like a barbell or something in Dead Rising 1, which is very common for one of the ones in Alfresco Plaza. He's across from the gym and you need to like hit him to convince him. Well inevitably I would like grab a barbell and be like, okay, this is easy, and I just cave his skull and he dies instantly, and then his brother there like freaks completely freaks out because you killed him and you can't save them. So don't don't be like me. Actually, uh, be smart. Always use unarmed. Or just like you can find plenty of joke weapons in Dead Rising 2. Like those little like dealer sticks or just chips. Anything that won't actually damage them that much you can use. I'm gonna pick up a little combo card here. This is these are the uh, the nail gloves. Tenderizers, that's the name. Also outstanding. They're not as good in a boss fight as the knife gloves, but for just zombie mobbing, extremely useful. I was considering picking up some other magazines too. Like, I would love to get the weapon, the bladed weapon magazine, because, like, right now I have, like, the battle axe, a sword, 
I could use the knife, the knife gloves for way longer, which those do a ton of damage and kill a lot of zombies. So I considered it, but in the end, I didn't really go for it. It's really hard to judge. I'm sure if I did a run through where I did pick it up, I would quickly find out like what the optimal path through is. Like I'm sure there's a ton more hidden bladed weapons that I know of that I just don't think about until I have the book. There is a broadsword in the Royal Flush Plaza that we're in right now that you can go get. So I probably just grab that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of favorite weapons. It's just some of them are really tough to make. Like the uh, Blambo, which is a bow and arrow with dynamite. You can make that here, but you have to go all the way up to where we found that sniper rifle. And then carry the dynamite and then go get the bow. Which, while very useful and gives you a lot of PP, it just isn't reliable and is so out of the way. I don't really end up making it that much at all in this game. So we're going to come up here. There's a older woman who is shopping over in what, Children's Palace or whatever this store is called. And she's just too busy talking to you to realize the zombie apocalypse is going on. She's mad that no one's helping her check out. So you got to convince her to come along and you have to carry her back to the safe room. Otherwise, she'll get fatigued on the way. I think this is before I realized how powerful the leadership book was for stuff like this. You might be able to just let her walk with the leadership book. I did not check. So... Let's see. Maybe I actually do let her walk a little while and we can say that it was worth it. I always have a debate when I when I do these recordings that I'll like eventually reach a moment where it's like, hmm, should I stop the recording now, experiment, and then like restart once I know what actually is the best way? Or like, is this good enough? Because like that happens a lot too where there are really cool strategies you can do at Dead Rising, but you don't need them necessarily because it's easy enough. That happened a lot at the end of Dead Rising 1 because as it got to the end, like I very rarely go that far. So I wanted to sit and explore like the final boss room rather than actually just end the game. I, I love these escalators. Something about the escalators is just so satisfying because of how fast you move. Like when I get like the bull skull on one of those moving sidewalks, it's just so satisfying. Because so much of this game is literally just you running around. And learning to like walk between zombies without actually getting hot by them, and without going all the way around. Once you can kind of learn to ignore the zombies, that's when the game really picks up. I would say in this one in particular, since the survivors can take care of themselves, and the fact that the zombies are a little bit more aggressive, it actually is not a good idea to fight the zombies because you will just become overwhelmed because there'll just be more and more coming because they'll see you and walk over. Whereas if you just keep walking, they'll never they'll never catch up to you. Let's go. So. <laughs> I think this little back room area is meant to serve the same purpose as the warehouse where assuming you have nothing in your inventory, you can probably find some snacks and like sledgehammers and stuff. But that way you also don't have to go through a loading screen. Like you did in the first game. I actually have this installed on my hard drive. Like I said, I got this uh, as a digital download for Games of Gold. And even then, these loading screens are terrible. I don't know what it is. I think it just Dead Rising is known for it. I'm sure it has to do with the them having really detailed areas because you have to keep going back to them. As well as just having to render all those zombies. So here Sullivan is mad that... He thinks you caused the outbreak, which is, uh, I don't want to talk too much about Sullivan's character until we get a little bit more in-depth, but tell me what you think about him and well, him and the other characters and just where you think they're going. Should have listened to my gut and kicked you out when you got here. Sullivan, I had nothing to do with this. I saw it on the TV. Saw you, buddy. Explain how that little trick works. Wasn't me on the tape. It was someone in my show outfit. But look, I'm really curious to see. Like, I really want to go play through the Frank version of this because without the uh, blame of setting this all in motion, I can't imagine some of those psychos would have the same reason to kill you. But I'm sure they didn't invent a reason. You could have told me that the front door was locked. Hey, you're that TV lady. I'll make you a deal. You keep rounding folks up, you can keep coming and going. You die out there. 
We'll have to leave it to the devil to sort you out. But ain't no I'm a little surprised he's so willing to let him go, because he is essentially... I believe he has the power to, like, arrest someone. And I'll do whatever so... Do. It seems like giving him the opportunity to escape would be a bit much. But then again, he probably knows, like, you're not going to be able to escape the city because of the military quarantine. And... It's probably pretty dangerous out there, so if you, hey, if he wants to let, like, let him risk his life and also save other people, I guess it's not that bad of a trade-off since you know he can't get out. Stacy, I'm Rebecca Chan, Channel 6 Action News. I'm here to help. Oh, you'll forgive me if I don't think it's very helpful that you accused my organization of a crime we didn't commit. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but clearly things are not as they seem. I put out the information I had. <laughs> that was quite a little finger wag, like, oh no, you didn't. Have all the exclusives you want if you help us figure out what's going on here. I decided to do post commentary because I can take the time to really sit back and fully see what they do with like their animation and different points to try to make. If I do like a live commentary, I get too focused in surviving during some situations, and I feel like it's better to do it a uh, post. But tell me what you think if you think I uh, rather have me do it live. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, check out one of the links below. Till next time, don't take your zombie safety for granted.